Kid, eh? Infinite garden paths are a terrific way to analyze infinite probability problems. For example, here's a problem about tossing a coin over and over and over and over again. The question is, I will repeatedly toss a coin. What are the chances that I will see two consecutive heads, so head, head, before I ever see a head followed by a tail? Head, tail. All right, so I'm gonna to keep tossing this coin. Notice whether I get heads or tails. Da, 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 da. And eventually, I'll either see heads, heads first, or I'll see heads, tails first. What are the chances I'll see heads, heads, before I see heads, tails? Okay. Now, I've chosen a problem here that you can actually just logically think your way through this, no worries, and get the answer. So I'll do the, the, the logical answer first, but then I want to show you how we can get to the same answer with infinite garden paths. So first of all, imagine I do toss the coin, I got, oh, I got tails. Okay, that does nothing for me, because this experiment doesn't kick in until I get either a head, followed by head, or a head, followed by tail. So getting a tail means I'm basically back to start. Oh, I got a tail again. In fact, oh, now I've got a head. So as soon as I get my first head, the experiment has kicked in. So it doesn't matter how many tails I do first, it doesn't matter, because when I get my first head, then the experiment kicks in, because I'm about to either have head, head, or about to have head, tail, and what are the chances I'll get head, head before I get head, tail? Well, I need to toss a head next, 50%. The answer to this problem is 50%. All right, got that. So I can know the answer is gonna be, there's a 50% chance I'll see heads, heads before I see heads, tails. Right, but let's now answer it with garden paths. So I'm definitely in some start mode. I'm about to flip my coin, about to flip my coin. All right, if I get on a toss a head, great, I'm, in going, I'm going for this experiment. So I can either flip a coin and get a head and end up here with heads, which is good, because I'm doing the experiment. But if I get a tails, I basically just start over again. Basically, getting a tails does nothing for me, it sends me back to start. Right, if I'm in this head spot right now, then what do I do next? Well, I have to flip a coin again, and I will either get another head, in which case I'm in the head head house, which is what I want, or I get a tail, in which case I'll be in the head tail house, which I don't want. So there is an infinite garden path system that represents that problem. Great. Well then, actually, given the arguments I was doing before, okay, people at the start node will either go straight into the system and have fun, or they go back to start and try again later, or go back to start twice and try again later. Eventually, everyone's gonna be moving into the system, in which case, philosophically, I could argue, any loops directly back to start might as well not be there, in order to think about what happens to everyone in the end. So I can say philosophically, this question matches that particular garden path system, which is straightforward because I can draw the area model for this. Everyone starts and start. After one iteration, everyone moves to getting ahead. And after the next iteration, everyone moves to splitting to half, either head, head or head, tail, and bingo. 50% of the people get that first, 50% of the people don't get that first, in which case the answer is 50%, just as we said before. So there is an example of an infinite probability problem. You don't know when it's going to end. That's what I mean by infinite here. You don't know when it's going to end, but I can still answer a question about it nonetheless. So let me clean the board and let's do another one. Okay, here comes a very complicated problem. This time we're going to roll a die over and over and over again, some indeterminate number of times. And the question is this. I will repeatedly roll a die. What are the chances that I will see both a 1 and a 2? I want to see both a 1 and a 2 before I ever roll a 6. If I roll a 6, I'm out. I want to see a 1 and a 2, both, before I ever see a 6. So what are the chances of winning that game? Rolling a 1 and a 2 and never rolling a 6 before then. All right, so you, see, you heard me have a deep breath because I'm, I'm having an emotional reaction. I'm, I'm very human. So my emotional reaction to that question is, it looks scary. My brain says, I don't know what to do. I'm having a little panic moment. So deep breath is the appropriate thing to do. I'm in my honest human self. And let's see if we can do something. Because I might be able to mimic that with a garden path system. So I'll just take it through slowly and see what comes of it. Give it a try. So yes, I'll be about to start. So I'll be one of the people that's gonna start this experiment. So I'll be in some start state like everyone else. And what could happen? So if I, actually, if the first thing you do is roll a die, and if you get, see, a six, if you got a six right off the bat, that'd be bad. As soon as you roll a six, you roll a six, you failed. So that takes you straight to the fail house. Now, let me be very honest, I've got to be very careful here, because I have a feeling the weights are going to be different, because I know only one-sixth of the time I'll roll a six. You know, one-sixth of the people roll a six. So one-sixth of the people go down this path and just straight to the fail house. You don't want sixes. 
Now, people might roll a one or they might roll a two, which would be good. I mean, it's not what I need. I need both a one and a two, but it's got them started. So they could go to a place where they roll a one, roll a one or a two. In which case, well, I shouldn't do that as a house. That's still a node. So they're on their way. They haven't completed the task yet, but I know one six of the people roll a one, one six of the people roll a two. So that means two six, one third of the people will get either a one or a two. So that's a one third. Great. So rolling a six takes you to fail house right away. Rolling a one or two gets you going. And if you roll anything else, a three, four, or five, well, that's irrelevant to the problem. You're just going to try again. You're going to do it again. Keep rolling until you get either one or two or get a six. So the people that roll three, four, or five basically go back and try again. And that's three, four, or five. That's half the people. Okay. Okay. I'm starting to get there now. Starting to get there. Now, these people here in the roll one or two, so I've got smudges everywhere. A bit smudgy, sorry. Still have to keep going because they need the other number. If they got a one, they still need to get a two before they get a six. Or if they got a two, they still need to get a one before they get a six. So they've still got to do some work here. So let's see what can happen to these people. Well, of course, if they roll a six right away after that, once six of them will, they've gone straight to the fail house. But if they've got a one and they roll the other number, they'll win because they have both a one and a two. Or if they've got a two and they roll the other number, they'll win. They've got both one and a two. So rolling the other number gives them a win. So changes, but then those people, if they roll the other number, will have both, have both one and two. They win. So that will send people to the win house. And that would be, what, one sixth of them. Because if you've got a one, you've got to get a two, one sixth chance. Or if you've got a two, you've got to get a one, one sixth chance. One sixth, one sixth. All right, so that leaves the rest of the people. If they roll the same number again, not helpful to them. If they roll a three, four, or five, not helpful to them. They're gonna get the other number or they're gonna get a six to see something definitive happen. Otherwise, they're essentially just trying again. So actually four out of six, that is two thirds of the people will be in this node and essentially trying again. That I think, a little bit messy, is an infinite garden path system that mimics that problem. That is that problem in fact. So we're being asked, what are the chances that you end up in the win house compared to ending up in the fail house when you go through the system? All right, so now what to do is like, can I simple, philosophically simplify this system in my mind? And the answer is yes, because I see a loop from start to itself. So um, let me uh, erase the problem and see if I can start drawing a simplified version of this. Um, I'm going to be careful. The, the weights make me think, so I have to think carefully. Because yes, half the people just be trying again, trying again, trying again. But all those people will eventually move into the system. But one third of them will go this way, one sixth of them go this way at each iteration, which means double the number of people go this way. That's really two sixths go this way, one sixth goes this way. So people will split yes, left, and right, but in a two to one ratio. So when I argue, well, eventually these people will go into the system. They'll all go into the system eventually, but they'll go down in a two to one ratio. So the fractions I need here need to reflect a two to one ratio. That is, two groups of people go here, one group of people go there. Let's get a stronger marker. So what I really need is two thirds of the people there, one third. I want all the people to end up either way. Two thirds, one third is the two to one ratio for all those people. So philosophically, what I had on the board before is equivalent to this system. And look at these people. They have their own little loop. I know all these two-thirds of the people go here will eventually either go that way or that way. In fact, they go equally either way. So this is philosophically equivalent to say, look, all these people here will eventually move either this way or this way, but equally so. So it was one six, one six before, but actually it's really equal fractions. It must be one half, one half. Whoa. So that is the system I have philosophically equivalent to, at least. All right, so let me now start drawing this and see if I can see what's going on. So, uh, first thing, everyone starts at start. Great. After one iteration, one iteration. So, two thirds of the people are here and one third of the people have failed. Of those two thirds of the people, what happens next? Oh, half uh, fail and half win. Oh, that's it. What fraction of people are in the winning state? It's half of two-thirds. Actually, that means 
third of the people. Half of two thirds is one third. The probability of winning, the probability of winning is half of two thirds is one third. One third of the time, you will roll both a one and a two before you see a six. Wow, that's amazing we can work that out. In fact, let me end off this video by cleaning the board and giving you one more problem for you to try for yourself. This is really cool stuff. Okay, here's another potentially infinite process. I will repeatedly toss a coin back to my coin. But this time I'm asking, what are the chances I will see three consecutive heads? Head, head, head before I see heads, tails, heads, HTH. What are the chances in flipping this coin over and over again that I will first come across head, head, head before I ever see head, tail, head? Can you work it out? Try drawing a garden path system for this one and see what you can do with it. Loads of fun.